Hi, good evening to everyone. Um, thank you for joining me. I'm glad that you can see me here for the time being, because again, I have been censored on YouTube. And what did I do? I just took apart a New York Times article. It was published just a few days ago, and um, I, I dismantled it, and they got upset. And so the video that I did, if you want to see it, look in the description below and you'll be able to find the link to it. Now, I don't understand why facts are so difficult for some people to accept because everything I said in that conversation was factual. I didn't make up anything and it was censored. I called it out. But you have to understand what the calling out was. The calling out was not just saying, you know, I think that you are wrong on it. And I probably if I'd thought about it at the time, I would have known that this would have really got them triggered. So what happened is that in the article, it said this. And it used this term, and I'm careful to say it, vanishingly rare. Okay, you can read what's here. Now... <laughs> What can I say? When I when I see rubbish, I call it out. And the rubbish is that they hadn't done the research. Vanishingly rare is only relevant if you have done relevant studies. And what studies do you have to do? You need to do autopsies. I'm not talking about epidemiological studies or people looking at numbers. No, no, no. You need to do autopsies. Just about a year ago, I did an unbelievable, the first full autopsy on a COVID vaccine death. I mean, goodness gracious, <laughs> how can you expect to get answers if you are not doing autopsies? And that's fundamentally what the problem seems to be. They don't like it when you put a point on that cannot be refuted. And what I did when I called it out is I just demonstrated in another paper exactly what happens. And so I'm not even going to say it. You can read it here. This was a case of a 34-year-old guy. It took two years. The parents had to fight to get the autopsy done. They had to get this done in Germany. It was unbelievable. Nobody wanted to do it. And when they did it, they found the evidence. And that's what I spoke about. And so the problem is not about facts. The problem is about inconvenient facts. There are not many people who are talking about this kind of thing. And so the reality is that you are not going to know. The general public has no idea as to what's, what's ahead because they don't understand what has happened in the past. Now, I, I genuinely am cautious with regards to highlighting specific things that I have done. But in order to understand why I am so far ahead with what I'm speaking about, you have to understand where I'm coming from with this. As I highlighted to people just recently, and I'll highlight it again, this is from May 2020. This is when we published it. So the theory was actually before that. It took a while to get it published. So in May 2020, we said that this is an autoimmune disease, specifically involving ACE2, the entry receptor. Now, at the time, we couldn't get the funding to do the research to prove it, but it was done by other people. Actually, in October 2020, somebody had done similar kind of research as we were trying, and we thought that was it. But for some reason, their paper didn't get published and it was just left. Because if, you, if, if the scientific community understood that this is a viral mediated autoimmune disease, suddenly everything changes. You don't use things that will prime the immune system. That's fundamental of the problem. And so that was just a theory in May 2020. But as I recently showed here, this is exactly what they have demonstrated in March 2024. So we're talking about, I'm, I'm four years ahead 
of the general scientific consensus. Autoantibodies to ACE2 are associated with COVID-19 disease severity. This is the problem. And so when I speak about stuff, I'm not speaking about it from the perspective of this is an this is from four years of research, four years of being ahead in the research. And the problem is, is when you call it out, they don't like it. Because once you understand autoimmunity, and it's not complex, it's it's very straightforward. I would challenge anybody who actually understands the science and can understand the clinical context. Just stop a minute and think about it. If the spike protein is triggering autoimmune responses from whatever source, what are the likely outcomes in the longer term? Just think about it. If you think about it, you will realize that anybody can come up with exactly what is happening and what is going to happen in the future. It's, it's not complicated. You just need to ac accept and acknowledge autoimmunity. Without that, it, nothing makes sense. So coming back to the call out question, there was something else that I said in that video. And as I said, you have to look in the description below in order to see it. Um, but the video highlighted a strange occurrence that I didn't expect with regards to eosinophils. And it suggested that the immune system in this person had already been primed, even though he hadn't been exposed. And it raises some pretty serious questions. How is that possible? And what are the implications going forward? And so it, it, this is probably why they censored it, because I touched a nerve. I touched a nerve because autopsy can't be challenged. Autopsy is like doing the audit on a company. You bring in the accountants and they audit everything. They look at all the sources of income and they will then see if that company is sound. The problem is, is that without autopsy, people can guess and pretend. But when you see the pathology, when you look at the slides and you see the immune cells and they have specific patterns, there is no hiding. And so what it seems to be the issue is that for those people who are genuinely not interested in finding answers, they don't want to ask these questions. Because in reality, if, if, if this is wrong, then you just do the autopsies, you know, good amount, not one or two, and you demonstrate that they're all okay. Then you can silence people like me because I then won't have a leg to stand on. But there's already too much evidence out there from the autopsies that have been done that this is a pretty serious problem. So then I started to think about what are the things that they keep on censoring me about? And for those people who think I just have a free reign to talk, I don't. They always censor me. So I went back and I thought about it and I went back to the substack and I thought, well, what was the most recent, more, well, the more recent one that they censored me on? So this is the one that they got really upset about. And this one, I spoke about the deaths in the trial, in the original trial. Literally, again, I took it apart and I had down here literally identifying all the deaths, the characteristics of them um, between the, the cohorts vaccine and the placebos. And then I looked at the cutoff date and what would have happened if it had been different. Listen, this was one heck of a takedown that I did on the original research. And boy, did they get upset and they censored it. And so there it is on Substack if you want to take a look. Um, and then I thought, well, what else again did I get censors about? Because this keeps on happening. The other one was closely linked to what I was talking about here. This is to do with the mum fighting to get answers for her son who died. And again, this is where they spoke about autopsy, where the facts really stand out. And so they were able to, we were able to, we had it in here. This was the, um, the YouTube. It, they considered it medical misinformation. That's what um, they had said at the time. You're not allowed to talk about autopsy. 
And the only reason that can be is because they know they can't refute autopsy. If you are seeing patterns on autopsy, that is the science. Everything else is just opinion. If you want to refute autoimmunity, you have to demonstrate it by autopsy. But based on the research, as I said, if you are getting autoantibodies, as they said, antibodies that target a normal protein, and it's not just ACE2 that it's targeting, you are going to see specific characteristics about the inflammation that point to autoimmune disease. That may be why they're afraid of doing autopsies. Because if you do an autopsy, it becomes blatantly obvious what you're dealing with. This is pretty serious stuff, and they're doing everything in their power to silence people like me. I ask too many questions. I ask too many hard questions. And I ask too many questions that they can't answer. Now, just to remind you, the way that you help this is that please join me on these courses. This is an advanced 360. Literally what I'm doing is I am taking every aspect of the pandemic and putting it in context. And so far, we're at about 25 modules. This is going to probably end up ending up being about 40 modules going through the upper airway, the immune system, autoimmunity. It, it, it's just a full-on course taking apart and explaining what it is that we're seeing in the pandemic. Because I'm starting to no longer be um, uh, balanced on this. I just say it as it is. If you talk to somebody and they're telling you about COVID, and they don't talk about autoimmunity as the primary mechanism, don't even bother to listen to them. They have no idea what they're talking about. If you don't take autoimmunity as the central bit to start from, nothing makes sense. That's just the reality. It's not my fault. Again, I remind you, I'm not making this up. Anybody who just, just read the paper, look at it, and you have to remember that this paper here, it's showing you the clear difference in terms of um, autoantibodies between the different cohorts. I'm just trying to find it here. This is it here. Um, I think I probably better open this in a new tab so that you see the full, full section here. But this is what it looks like. These autoantibodies to ACE2, you're talking about IgG autoantibodies. I'll make it full screen. IgG autoantibodies are elevated in severe disease. They are elevated, IgA, elevated as well in severe disease. And IgM is elevated in severe disease. In mild disease, it is about the same as the healthy cohort. Maybe a slight difference, but mild disease is about the same. Maybe only IgA is slightly higher than the healthy, which makes sense in the context um, of, the, of the disease. This is pretty serious stuff. There is nowhere to hide if this is autoimmunity. Not, not if, this is autoimmunity. And therefore, it explains why the primary treatment modality around COVID-19 is immune suppression. Steroids, you know, interleukin-6 blockers. Well, monoclonal antibodies are not as effective. If you actually think about it, that's what works. Antivirals don't help. Paxlovid just failed. Who else is using rem remdesivir at the moment? So the antivirals don't work because it's about the virus triggering autoimmunity. It's as simple as it can. So listen, whilst you have the opportunity to hear me, make sure you are following me on um, Substack as well. Follow me on different platforms. Usually all the links are there. Uh, this is the video that had been um, actually um, censored. You can come and see it there. And in that, we talk about uh, the, um, the, the link to the, um, to the article as well. So I'll not take them apart again, because they clearly get upset when you do that. But just to highlight the point that there is no easy way to get around this issue. It needs to be acknowledged, it needs to be addressed. And so the people who are in a position of power need to understand there is an elephant in the room. And this autoimmune elephant 
is going to smash everything down within the next five to 10 years. It's hard enough to get it out of the room if you acknowledge it. But if you don't acknowledge it, and if you just leave the elephant there, the outcomes are going to be horrific. Everybody needs to start thinking. I'm no longer going to allow people the excuse of, well, that's just your opinion. Do the research, do the autopsies, do not speak until you've got autopsies. Everything else doesn't matter. That's what needs to be done. We need as many as possible. Every death needs to be autopsied. This is how we use AI. Get the system to just get the slides, put it in front of AI, let it do the analysis. That's the kind of research we need urgently. Because if we leave this alone, I'm telling you, autoimmune diseases are like the hardest to manage, and they are usually lifelong, lifelong treatment. So we have challenging times ahead of us. It needs everyone to demand that the right things are done. I have a voice at the moment, but clearly, it may be a matter of time before I lose that. Somebody and everybody needs to make a difference and stand up to make sure that the proper science is done so that we can protect the population. Have a great evening. And remember, look in the description below, click on subscribe. It's in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. You'll see a little bell. It's somewhere about right here. Click on that subscribe button and I'll keep you updated while I can.